Thanks for tuning in today, you guys. This is how to run a skid loader. But today we're gonna cover some of the how not to's, some of the ways operators get themselves in trouble. And we're also gonna show you how to get out of trouble. We're gonna go deeper into our lesson on the basics of operating a skid steer, covering grading basics, back dragging, and how to become a proficient operator. This is the same kind of information that I teach all of my new guys coming into my company, and I'm gonna be sharing it with you guys. All right, break time. And I want to go over a couple of the don'ts. You're starting to kind of get the hang of the machine, right? But there are a few things that will make this machine tip over and tip over pretty fast. Yeah, if you wiggle it too much, I know I saw it right in the bucket. If you wiggle it too much, it will start going. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about the uncomfortable feelings and what they mean. The forward backward tilt, you're really safe in a skid loader. They can't really roll all the way backward unless you make a big mistake. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And they can't really nose dive unless you make, make another big mistake. And the big mistake in both cases is having your bucket too high in the air and then traveling with it. Yeah. So the lower you can keep your bucket, the lower you keep your center of gravity in this machine, the safer you are. A big don't. Don't raise your arms in the air and then turn unless you want to tip over sideways, yeah. okay? Another big don't, don't take a huge scoop of dirt, raise your bucket up high and take off running and then all of a sudden come to a stop because you're gonna be in a wheelie or you're gonna be face planting your machine, okay? Anytime you feel uncomfortable, the safest move you can do is this. Anytime, simply let go of everything. Let go of everything in the machine, and the machine will quit responding instantly. The bucket won't move. The machine won't go forward and backward except for whatever gravity or momentum you already have. Your safest move is simply hands off and let everything come to a rest. Hey, Dirt Monkey, your kid's wearing orange Crocs in a skid loader. It's not a hand foot control. It's actually a, a joystick control. We're on my own property, we're not. It's, is it proper footage here? No. Can you do it? Yeah. Run them barefoot if you want. Have. I've ran hand foot controls barefoot. Just can't do it on somebody else's site. You can do it at your own. And when you're learning, if it ain't hurting nothing, I think he's having fun. And I'm having fun. I don't know how, how do you guys spend your Memorial Day weekend? I'd love to hear it. What do you guys do for fun? So this is the exact same training course I would do. I do with each and every single person. I think I'm being a little bit more thorough because of you guys though, because I can't be there right next to you and answer your question. All right, so one of the things I want to point out that he did right, I don't know if he did it instinctively or not, but he turned his butt, so he's in this machine like this. When he went to turn, he turned his butt this way, so he's facing his biggest danger zone. This is a danger zone, right? So he's spatially aware of that danger zone. So he's actually looking at it. That's the right way to turn. Now in this situation, if he's here and he's going to back up and he turns this way, He's looking away from his danger zone, which is now over my shoulder. So this is what he'd see in a machine. And he doesn't know where those boulders are until it's potentially too late. So he turned, there's also being aware of where all your obstacles are. He's gotta be aware that he's got that there. He's got that there. This isn't an easy sight. So as he's driving up, he should be making a game plan. He should be trying to figure out exactly how he's going to get back out. Is he going to back all the way down the hill or is he going to turn? And if he's going to turn, which way is he going to turn? What obstacles does he have? So he should be looking forward and thinking about how he's going to be going back. He's doing great on that picking up those loads though. You see how he's not in the material underneath that's an important point if he was being really aggressive he would have had the bucket angled like this and dug this out and gouged down below the grade 
if he was going too light, he'd have the bucket like this. Then he'd have a skin mark from the backside of the bucket or a trail that, I mean, it's, that wouldn't be so bad. What he had is his bucket just right, which let him hover right above this, leaving the good stuff underneath. This is still intact. It will grow. I better get out of his way. What do you got, baby? What is that? Finish. Finish. <laughs> what the? <laughs> She's proud. She's keeping it from Lucy. <laughs> No, I think that's a thigh bone to something. What do you got, baby? Oh, you got it. Oh, she's so proud. She's so proud. <laughs> she's so proud. So none of this actually surprises me about him. And the fact is he plays a lot of video games, which gives him a very distinct advantage because the way these machines are controlled and the feel of it is nothing more than being in a three-dimensional video game. The actual, I mean, it really is. That's all it really is, really. I mean, he is just playing a video game right now. He's going to be good at it. So if you guys play games and you want to work somewhere that's just an extension of what you're doing, make a lot of money heavy equipment heavy I guarantee you gamers I'm amazing heavy equipment operators I can guarantee it your eye hand coordination the instincts <clears throat> the constant variety and then just because when you're running heavy equipment it's always something different different drop jobs different pieces of equipment you can you can run an excavator one year a bulldozer another year a skid loader a third year you can run a road grader another year you're a heavy equipment operator it's like what video game do i want to plug into on my console this year ching you guys got the world by the tail man holy crap so now he's painted himself into a corner he's got all these piles here but he didn't get any up in there so let's ask him what he thinks his best bet is he's got two options here so we got to get three four scoops up in there we don't have enough black dirt what do you think would be the best option right Right? Right. You can either actually just bring your bucket up a little bit so you're not cutting the subgrade. Dirt, the subgrade. Okay? When we're done spreading the black dirt, that'll be the grade. So don't cut the subgrade because we've got that set for our elevations, but you can just push this over to there and drop and drop it off if you want or you can go up and grab a big load of dirt and push right through it with your pile and push these piles in front of it that way or you can just grab a bucket load and just hop scotch skiggly scotch over to there and be just fine and dandy if he just goes through with that bucket he's going to grab that dirt and instead of pushing everything with it in front of it He's going to be doing this. And when he does this, he's going to have more of a tendency to gouge. By getting that bucket full and then putting it down, he's going to push a trail, a fine trail underneath him as he goes forward. And that's going to create an even path, no gouging, allowing him to get to his delivery point, drop the material off and go backwards on the same trail without any bouncing. And then he can use that once he's done that the first time he can then use that same trail to get in to gain access for more delivery points so you're always strategizing your sites which is fun which is so fun it really is and there's just more than one way to skin a cat right so you can look at a site and you could come up with a good plan and another guy could look at a site and come up with a different plan and it's still good you guys got to figure out ways you can love what you do.
didn't say you got to figure out ways to do what you love. So what I'm saying is you got to figure out ways to love what you do. Sometimes you got to do things you don't love, but if you dissect it and you start to look at it and maybe, maybe you can start to appreciate it. And then when you can start to appreciate little bits of it, you can start to figure out ways to appreciate bigger bits of it. Did I want to grow up to be a heavy equipment operator? No, that was not my dream. I needed to be some mega rich million billionaire that figured out some easy way to make a living. I should have had my mansion on the ocean in Florida, not a hill of dirt in Minnesota. Started to look at running heavy equipment. Realized there's so many cool things about it. Such a blessing being in this industry. Mm -hmm. Look at him, he's bulldozing his way through the pile. And it did just what I said it would. It left a smooth path. Good, good. I can tell by the tracks. So, that was his first one. That's where he bulldozed through. So there's what he did. He bulldozed, stopped, backed up, went, He's got that nice path. He just he doesn't have to do anything. Just drive in now. That's a good dump. That's a good dump. If he would have brought it forward, he couldn't have gotten in to grade it backward. Okay? He's got just enough room that he can come in, he can start working it. Because he's gonna want to work it forward a little bit as he's working it backward. There's there's that strategy happening one more time it's going way better than I thought he's got the hang of it oh, that's perfect let's work for me all right he just screwed up you see where he's at right now down there booms down so that water's edge the closer you get to the water the softer the soils are right so don't go sideways in, into soft soils. If you're wondering if soils are soft, go for nose first, always bucket first. You can start to go into soft soils and if you feel your machine starting to sink and tip, simply put your bucket down, lift yourself out, like you're putting your hand and picking yourself up and back out. Ever wonder if a situation's sketchy, nose first and feel your way around until you're confident. Okay, we're going to start into the grading process. And the grading process uh, includes all of the skills that you've used so far in picking up the dirt and moving the dirt. So let me, let me just talk to you real quick about what, what that actually means. You put the whole bucket down and get it as flat and level as possible according to the grades and contours that you're going up and down. You also can grade going forward just as much. To grade going forward and the, the ability to float. That's the ability to control how much material is getting spread in front of you. You need to fill up the bucket. So you put a full bucket of dirt and then you start ramming into these piles of soil. But when I say ramming, you drive into them and then you just use the front of your bucket and what you're doing is you're leaving material behind or you're taking more material away. I get it over there. You're gonna do that throughout this entire site. Everywhere that you see dirt, you now start to break. You're gonna use your, gonna get a bucket full of dirt and you're gonna create your own path. You get out of the way, scaredy cat. Tilt your bucket forward. Oop. See, it's heavier, so it moves more. Raise it up a little, raise it up, the whole thing. Drive forward slowly. Good job, baby. Get out of the way, baby. Hey, if you have to pick it up, pick it up. If, you, if you're if you gouging, this is where you gotta watch what you're doing. Cause you've gotta, when you're driving forward, it's easy to gouge fast, he gouged. You've gotta follow the contours with the tip, the, the leading edge of your bucket. You're cutting to the subgrade. Up, up. There we go, there we go. Perfect, perfect, come on forward. See, he didn't leave a trail behind him. See that? Now he is, now he is. Back dragging is where you begin your skills of grading. Okay? 
You've got a float position on your joystick. Which joystick controls your booms? Okay, so now your bucket will float. You can still control the tilt, tilt of the bucket, the, the lip, but as you're backing up, it's going to automatically smooth for you. So go ahead and back up. Now when you want this, when you want to change the grade, you just angle the bucket different and you'll be able to, to add material or subtract material just by angling your bucket. See right now he's bulldozing, you see that? That's an important thing to note. See what I was talking about with the back of the bucket? Angle it down, we want to get rid of some of this material behind us. Yep, 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 keep going, keep going. More. Yep, back up. Now we'll watch some of that material start to disappear. See that how that works? So now he's leaving more material. Now if he wanted to grab some of that as he was backing up, now as he's going up, hop, hop, hop. Perfect example. As you're going up a hill where you were level before and your bucket was leaving material, now it's now changed the angle of your machine and your bucket is being more aggressive. So as you go up the hill, you've got to put the front lip down, put it down. You've got to adjust that yourself. The bucket, even though it's in float mode, won't do that for you. So go ahead and back up. Now, wherever he's too high, that's where you would start to, when you're going forward, you would grab this and start to push this into different areas. That's where those forward grading skills come in real handy. Okay. Hound dog howl, hound dog howl. There we go. Yes. A hound dog howl of approval. Oh. <laughs> mm. He's experimenting by grading going forward and using that front lip. Look at that. Love it. Oh. Dialing it in. Nice. Oh, perfect. That's perfect, so now we can just get that nice smooth grade blended in. The weight of the bucket is helping, but I think he's using down pressure. I don't think he's in float right now. Oh, no, he's in float, he's in float. You can tell by the boom arms going up and down right there. That's okay, that's okay. There we go. Good note of detail, how he came up and over the material then grabbed the material and pulled it backwards. Hi, baby. And now he's, as he's going backwards, he's able to control exactly how much material floats and where. Come right up in, get up in tight. I like to get that back lip. I'll get right down where I want her. Pop her and float. And let the machine do the work. But sometimes the machine doesn't know that I want to cover up that spot right there. Missed it. I got a guess, right? I'm guessing because I can't see where it is. 
Well guys, I hope you're able to hope maybe use this video to train in some of your own noobs. This is the kind, this is exactly what I do when I'm first training someone in, so I hope this can help some of you guys do the exact same thing. God bless you guys and go get them. I ended up taking over on the skid loader just because we needed to wrap it up and Colton was getting tired. So big thanks goes out to him for helping out make this video. Big thanks goes out to you guys. And if these videos help you out, that thumbs up button goes a long way. And let me know if you want any more training videos down below and what kind of training videos those would be. Catch you on the next one, you guys.